Uh, before we get started, let me fix mm. something real quick. I mean, technically, we're already started, but we're gonna do. It. How about that right there? Did you see that? Look at that crowd. I need to formally apologize because I said the stripe up was a dumb idea, and I didn't think that it was gonna work. But the university laid out T-shirts. And it looked damn good in the FedEx forum on Sunday afternoon. And shout out to the people in the upper levels because they matched up pretty well. Yeah, I'm going to have to agree. I definitely didn't think it was going to work. I I will say, you and I agreed, if they handed out shirts, there's a better chance it would work. Yeah, Shirts if were out. Do something like it that, looked beautiful. You, you got to have shirts. And hey, those were good shirts. Maybe some of the best they've handed out with the script old school Memphis. Yeah. Shout out to the 73 team. Blue yeah. version, white version looked good, but I uh, that stripe up it looked good in there on Sunday. When did we have those jerseys? We wore those for a little bit. Uh, we had them like with Spoon, the, yeah. The Will Barton team had them. Yeah. Well, that era, I think that we had them a couple of years, but uh, mm-hmm. like Joe and Spoon and them wore them, yeah. Yeah, the I knew they looked familiar. The I just can't remember what year, yeah. Um, all right, Tej, one and one on the week. Hey, you went down to Dallas. We talked about it last week. Absolutely cheeks of a basketball team right now. And you handled biz. Yeah. Came out of there with a 19 point win, even though Moody Coliseum was leaking from the rafters onto the floor. <laughs> they got all kinds of water problems down there when it rains. Take it back to the fall. The football field started ballooning up because yep. they had drainage problems. I don't know. They need to figure out their the structure of their facilities and how they handle rainfall. Cause it's football fields having problems. Moody's leaking onto the floor. You need to figure that out. Get somebody out there. Trey, you know, this firsthand that the SMU game, I said, uh, what's one thing that we could do to win the game. And I think the hidden rule, and we talked about this in the discord. If the tigers just shoot 50% from three, it's a W right. Prove me wrong. Have we ever shot 50% from a three and lost? Uh, I would have to go and look that up. But I'm going to say probably, unless it was one of two from three, I'm probably not. But yeah, you shoot 53% while making nine from behind the arc. Pretty good chance you're probably going to come out of that with a dub. Uh, yeah. But yeah, I mean, overall... Solid game all around. You had four double-figure scores. DeAndre with 13, Elijah with 10, KD with 23, DeMario yeah. with 15. Um, Big buckets. Yeah, 53% from three, 52% from the field. Uh, overall, just a, a good game. I mean, that SMU made a couple runs. They'd cut it like six, seven-ish. Here yeah. and then you pulled away at the end, you won by 20, you did what you needed to do. The line was only like six and a half, which was downright disrespectful. So I bet it hard and it paid off. I think that's one bit. with with a big one. That's what you needed. Metrics wise, you needed it. Yeah, that, that's definitely a game that you and I agreed that Tigers should probably win handily 15, 20 points. Obviously. They still took care of business, but we knew that that number was going to creep down towards the end. Tigers weren't going to do much and kind of seep away probably some of that lead that they they didn't really need to give away. Yeah. I mean, you, you were a little bit sloppy. You had 18 turnovers, yeah. uh, but you did force SMU into 19 turnovers. Uh, Rebound-wise, you out-rebounded them. You had 21 assists. So, you know, like you said, good night Thursday. Um, we watched it from a bachelor party outside of Nashville. Good little time we had there. Uh, but again, got the dub you needed. And then you moved into Sunday, Tej. And uh, let me tell you, what an atmosphere. Mm. Electricity in the building. Sunday morning at 11 a.m. It was a beautiful scene. That is what Memphis Tiger basketball is and should be. And it's been a while since it's felt like that up in there. I mean, it, there were time it got, I don't know that it's been louder in that arena as it was at times on, on Sunday. Specifically, yeah, I was the not, first, 
the first KD three he made to take the lead, very loud. And then the logo three to tie it up, 63 all was, I mean, the place was rocking. Yeah, I started uh, watching the game from Brookhaven and then made it home for the second part. But uh, that KD transition three, I know which one you're talking about, where mm. he sapped that. I was like, I through the TV, I've literally never heard Grizzlies games that loud. Like Grizzly playoff games have not been that loud. I was like, this is wild. I mean, I've I've wild. yeah, I've been to Grizz playoff games. I mean, the Tennessee Memphis game probably was close to it, but it just, I mean, that was 15 years ago. So I just could be misremembering, but Sunday, what an atmosphere. It, mm. It's a shame. I felt like the whole time I just knew we were going to win. Going into it, I felt incredible. I felt like it was a W. And it just wasn't that. I'm just so tired of losing to them like that. The half-court shot, the overtime games, like, oh, I wanted it bad. He freaking pushed yeah. off. He did push off, but you don't call that as a ref. No ref calls that. I mean, what? I mean, yeah, you got to. If you want to be mad, they're not going to call it. But it's just unfortunate because I think at any other point in the game, it is called. It just happened to be that that's the last play of the game, so they're not calling it, which is also like, I don't know. I will say, if you want to get mad at any one particular call, it should have been on the inbounds. The the tech no tech. That they went back and reviewed and still somehow. I don't know how that's not a tech. tech. I mean, I don't I don't know how it's not. I mean, I never heard an explanation. I think they tried to say it's because the ball had left Alo's hands, but it, go look at the still shot. He's what freaking has, standing out of bounds up against Alo, and the ball is right here, and he's smacking. I mean, it's a technical foul. That's two shots and the ball. Granted, that's right before Katie hits the game time <laughs> three, right? So yeah. like who knows what happens? Maybe we make both free throws. You're still down one, and you don't score, right? So who knows how that goes? But yeah, I don't. I don't know how that wasn't two shots in the ball right there. Yeah, either way it goes. That was not, you know, the the deciding factor of the game. You know, uh, I think for the most part we could probably chalk it up. I think that ten point swing, the ten zero run that uh, Houston went on was not necessarily the dagger, but you felt it. And it it definitely got real tight there for a second because you just see that lead slipping away. And it yeah, just, I, I mean, in the pit of my soul, I knew that is definitely the point in time where I started to feel like, dang, we're not going to pull this out. And then we came back and tied it. Um, but yeah, I mean, you'd gone up five. You'd gotten you were up five and gotten three consecutive stops in a row, which is what they call a kill, and mm-hmm. you couldn't score. I mean, you that's an opportunity you could have extended. You score on all three of those, and you're looking at like 10, 11 point lead, right? And you just couldn't you couldn't do anything. Some of it, I mean, you got a little bit stagnant offensively. Mm-hmm. You were taking shots at the end of the, the shot clock, like um and again, that's I'm not gonna say that lost the game either, but yeah, that that kill shot of a run by Houston definitely uh changed the feel for a little bit. I do have a question for you. What happened to DeAndre? I, I mean, don't know, man. I mean <sighs> he's been so good for us all year. He has. And I don't want to say that he disappeared, but like that just wasn't a no. He's averaging 17 at home and you only get eight out of him. He played 30 minutes. You want to point to fouls. He was in foul trouble a little bit. He had four fouls. Obviously got three in the first half. So he had mm-hmm. to sit the last couple of minutes. Gets sure. his fourth. What was it? Like 14-ish minutes maybe. I, I don't know. what. It, I mean, some of it we talked about a little bit before we started. You were getting, and I, I'm going to be honest, I'm a little bit surprised you didn't show up tonight wearing your Malco jersey because shout out to Malco for the 30 minutes Thought he about gave it. us yesterday. Uh, nine and seven and a steal, two blocks, an assist, one and one from the free throw line, four or seven from the field. I mean, big minutes he gave yesterday. Dude, standing firm down in the paint like Stonehenge. Like he so was firm. 
he was great. I mean, yeah, this, I think that's what you expect about his from foot, Malcolm, right? His footwork and the paint a little bit. He's got that Dude, spin don't down. With the, he's throwing up reverses and stuff. He So in, in football terms, like everyone wants to be a running back or everyone wants to be a skill position. Like no one wants to be a, a lineman, essentially, right? It's just like in basketball, everyone wants to be a guard. I think Malco wants to be a guard. I think at Seoul, he's a big guard. And point center, in, you heard it down here. Down in his heart, he's a he's a guard at heart. <laughs> we've seen him Malcolm Malcolm's coast ever coast been a guard. Before. We have, and we've we've seen lifetime. some fancy moves lately. Oh, if yeah. we can reverse layup, Malco's ready to go dancing to the big dance. I'll tell you that much. So are we. So are we. Um, My wife's gonna be so pissed when I get in bed with this. Are you kidding me? Yeah. In bed with it, she won't yeah, be she's already in bed. Oh, okay, she's already. Asleep. I didn't know where you were Probably. going with that. This is a G rated show, a TJ. Family show, Trey. Family show. Uh, all right, TJ. Looking, I mean, we talked about it. You didn't really lose anything statistically. I mean, they shot a hmm. better than you from the floor. What, I mean, what do you, what sticks full out throttle of here? Whoa, oh, brother. I don't wear our full throttle right here, man. You don't I'm ever, talking like this from here on out. You don't ever let that hair down like that. I'm hey, bud. It out. <laughs> hey, bud. Um, yeah, go ahead. I know I interrupted you. We didn't lose just, anything. Just, I don't understand. I, I literally I mean, you gave up you gave up 10 threes. That hurts, right? They had seven in the first sure. half. I think getting down early in that first half and being down what nine at half makes a big mm-hmm. difference, right? Because you got to battle back from that, but like Sure, and 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 Coach Hardaway said this in the post game that that game came down to his his game plan in the first half, which they made a total adjustment yeah. on. But like the trapping of Sasser and Sheet in the first half, and just left wide, sure. and it wasn't like they were making contested crazy threes and just hot for. I mean, they were wide open threes. Yeah. So you go over in the first half and they make seven, and that's a difference right there, at least for the first half. Obviously, you battle back. I mean, you won the rebounding battle. You shot 91% from free throw shooting, 23 free throws. You ended up making six threes, so you made six in the second half. I mean, you didn't turn it over a ton, 12 turnovers. You forced them into 14. It really just – yeah. I mean, I it does – it comes down to that – you make the run, you get up five, you get three stops, and you just couldn't get – you get, like, even another basket there and extend it to, like, a seven-point lead, and I feel like you find a way to win that one. I mean, you still almost yeah. found a way. You just – you get away with – they get away with a push-off and drain a shot at the horn. It's just like we ran out of time. <laughs> that game goes to overtime or even, like, two more possessions, and I feel like we find a way to win. Yeah, I, I, anytime the Tigers only have twelve turnovers, I don't even—I don't need to see any other stat line. I think that's going to be a—that's going to be a win. And I know it's—it's it's a different team, and maybe we shouldn't focus on the turnover margin any longer with Kendrick because we actually have like a real point guard. But that's kind of been the Achilles' heel. You want to add in free throws? Sure, we went twenty-one of twenty-three from free throws. All you're doing is adding to the case that if Memphis can play like they did against Houston. They don't lose another game until deep, deep into the tournament, right? 